The Consumers Health Forum of Australia is a national peak body, as I said. We uh, work to achieve safe, quality, timely health care for all Australians that's supported by accessible health information and systems. Whoops, sorry. Uh, uh, we are largely government funded uh, and we're supported uh, by the Australian government uh, to ensure that there is a strong consumer uh, voice and input into all healthcare decision making. And HTA is an area of great importance to Australia's health consumers and uh, particularly decisions around what is being listed on the Medicare benefit schedule and the pharmaceutical benefit schedule. And that is something uh, that we're starting uh, a conversation in. We're by no means perfect um, and we have a long way to go, but there is a commitment to ensuring that there is a strong consumer voice, certainly within the Australian context, as we've heard uh, in other contexts and other countries around the world, um, there is one too. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit today about how Australia is, is starting this sort of conversation. So I don't think we have time to go into all the ethical principles in this presentation, but I think it's important to note that no matter how much we talk about what is, how much science, how much assessment, um, at the point we have to decide whether to make available a product or a service, we are making a value judgment. Uh, it's just a question of whose values are informing it. Uh, there are many values involved in our decision making about what health products and, and services should be available and in what ways. Um, they might include anything from making money, prolonging life, improving the quality of life, reducing the spread of disease, improving productivity, improving safety, practicing a profession, gaining political support, or advancing a career. Uh, the reality is that values and assumptions underpin almost every interaction in our health system. And what interests me is that we really talk about them in this explicit way. So I think this is a very important and very welcome discussion. I think transparency about whose values informs decisions on HTA is a very important question. So I want to make my assumptions very clear um, and my values very clear at the outset. A health system, from my perspective, has to be informed by meeting the needs of the patients. I know some people uh, think uh, it's really about the economics or the clinical evidence or simply the health outcomes. Uh, but these are all subsets of a much larger objective and a much bigger value. Everything else follows. If we're only concerned about health outcomes, uh, as some claim that we are, uh, we would invest much more on population-wide public health initiatives. We'd have more compulsory seat belts. We'd have no smoking in public. We'd have anti-drink drive measures, immunisation, fluoridation of our water systems, et cetera, et cetera. So how does starting with the perspective and values of the health consumer translate into values that inform HTA? As I said, uh, um, health systems around the world are grappling uh, with how to make sure that the patient voice is heard. And we'd heard yesterday about, uh, in the UK, citizens' councils, and there are various other uh, methodologies used in different contexts around the world. Um, for our part, our small part, CHF uh, as a national peak body has undertaken quite extensive consultation with uh, consumers in recent years about their views on how they think consumers can be more involved in HTA processes. And uh, this is just a snapshot of um, some of the recent work that we've provided consumer input into in this area. So we are starting to have these conversations. They're by no means perfect. They're certainly evolving. Um, and I think the next important step, though, is for us to be able to make that enormous leap in making the assumptions uh, more transparent about how we are making HDA decisions, because ultimately that will drive better quality improvement and practice. 
So in a nutshell, consumers uh, have told us, and this is in an Australian context, but I, I imagine it's quite translatable around the world, um, uh, depending on the, on the context, but essentially consumers want a process that is cost-effective, efficient, transparent and accountable. They want a system that prioritises their safety over financial or industry-based priorities. They want to see funding, their taxpayer contributions, uh, allow, allocated in a way that reflects contemporary practice. So they want the newest um, technologies and the best available evidence. And across the spectrum, including medical devices, medical health services and procedures, and medicines, Consumers want a change in how applications are assessed to ensure that consumer experiences are given due consideration beyond the purely scientific and cost effectiveness analysis. They want to see rigorous post-market surveillance mechanisms which enable the capture and the use of adverse events. Um, and that includes the consumer experiences of those events. They want to be informed and educated. Um, to ensure that they have a good understanding of the HTA system and how it works, but also uh, education about adverse incident reporting so that they can participate in, in, in shared decision-making on the use, on their use, of health technologies which will enable them to get the best health outcome from the use of those technologies. Consumers have also stressed to us uh, the importance of interoperability of our system with systems around the world um, to ensure that there is better sharing of information between countries. Um, and we've certainly seen this in a few recent incidences with uh, medical devices where um, it's been difficult to receive uh, many times accurate information from other regulators. And we, as long as there's a good relationship, that certainly enables consumers to get faster, better access to information that helps them manage their conditions and make decisions about those conditions. So in our consultations with consumers, uh, we have reviewed the international literature to identify some of the models that could inform the basis of HTA uh, decision-making methods in Australia. And we're quite keen to learn from successful international models and to share our learnings with our international counterparts. Ultimately, in the context of an ageing population, increased rates of chronic disease and ever-increasing health costs, we need to rationalise and prioritise what we fund and make sure that funding is provided in a way that delivers the very best possible health outcomes from a consumer perspective. But at this stage, we don't know really what the community actually wants. Um, that means that we could actually be prioritising the wrong things. Our communities need to be having a major discussion about the true cost of health care and the finite nature of health funds uh, and to identify what consumers, the users and funders of the health system, want to fund and how this funding should be delivered. So thank you for having this topic on the agenda and uh, thank you for listening and uh, I look forward to the discussion. Gamsa hamnida.